my name is Eugene Fedor, and I'll be discussing uh, introduction to Zigbee uh, and mesh networking. Uh, specifically, I'll be talking about Rabbit-based Zigbee solutions. I am the software engineering one of the software engineering managers here at Digi International, uh, and I manage uh, primarily products for the Rabbit brand. So let's start off with uh, what we mean by a mesh network. Uh, a mesh network provides um, dynamic, reliable routing, uh, and one of the defining properties of a mesh network is that it's self-forming. As you can see, that means that the network nodes automatically establish routes to new nodes when they become available. Another property of mesh networking is that um, mesh networks are self-healing. That means that if a device, for example, is uh, taken out of commission uh, by a lightning strike, um, that the devices that were routed through that node are able to reconnect to the network. Um, they're basically able to rejoin the network um, uh, through existing routing nodes. Now, data in a mesh network hops along the network. So, for example, uh, let me use a pointer here um, to show you basically, so a, um, the data uh, 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 routes may change, but the data is passed. So if this node here wants to send to this node over here, what it'll do is it'll, it'll pass the data on to uh, the routing node that it's connected to, and, and the data just hops along from node to node to node until it reaches its destination. Now, mesh networking is great for wireless since new routes can be created out of the air. Uh, and uh, um, the concept of, of mesh also applies to wired infrastructures that provide redundancy. Um, but these, of course, have to be built. Wired environments are not dynamic. Uh, for example, like there are multiple routes through the Internet backbone, uh, so that Internet backbone is somewhat mesh-like because it, it can self-heal to some extent. But unfortunately, wired environments are really not ideal uh, mesh candidates since the mesh route is only as good as the number of wires deployed. And laying redundant wire is a very expensive thing to do. Uh, as we'll see in the next slide, uh, if you want a full mesh network, it requires many connections uh, given a, a, a certain number of nodes. Uh, before we delve a little further into mesh, I'd like to remind you of some of the basic network topologies that you can, can, can contrast against mesh network topologies. Uh, these include topologies such as star or point to multipoint networks where a central uh, router node uh, passes messages between end devices. So here's the central router node here in a star network, uh, and then you can see the end devices on the outside. Um, uh, token ring based networks where a token is passed around uh, a ring structure and uh, only the device with the uh, current that has the currently has the token can actually speak to the other devices. And then you have things like uh, uh, bus networks, like uh, some implementations of Ethernet, where a single media is shared among the devices, and only one device may uh, broadcast at a time. And most of the other devices spend uh, their time listening. Uh, wireless networks, to some extent, can be viewed as a bus network since they transmit on the same frequencies. Now, in contrast, a full mesh network is a fully connected graph, uh, as shown here, and every node can talk directly to every other node. Uh, these networks, of course, are extremely fast. I can just talk directly to whoever I want to. Um, however, uh, these are also very expensive since they require n times uh, n minus 1 over 2 connections for n devices. So, you know, in computer science big O terms, that's uh, big O of n squared for n devices. And of course, that, for wires, that's going to be, that's going to cost a lot of money. Uh, now, an alternative to that uh, topology is a partial mesh. Now, uh, these are preferable for most applications, um, 